Hello and welcome back to Four Struggling Filmmakers. I'm Noah and joined with me here is Jimmy, Emma and James. Now Hi. today is a special one because it's my birthday week. <laughs> and for my birthday week we're going to be playing that game we played on Jimmy's episode. But instead of horror we're doing comedy. What are the rules? I don't know so I'll pass it on to who it does. Whoever does. The way we're going to work it is we're going to have a big spinning wheel this week so that we can all play along. We've each got made a list of our top seven comedies and we'll be playing for certain um, numbers in the list because we're going to work collaboratively to put together a list of seven. So the options you'll be playing for, you'll be playing for the number one spot and the number five spot. The number two spot with a veto override, which means you can override someone else's veto. The number three spot and the number seven spot, followed by the number the number <laughs> number four spot and the number six. The audience seen the previous episode where we did this. They know what's going on. Spin, the Spin wheel. that wheel. 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 Spin yeah. that wheel. Spin that wheel. Spin the button. Yeah. The button. The next to pick oh. is. Oh, it's ringing. <laughs> Oh, it's his birthday pick. He gets to choose first. The jammy dodger. It's got to be one and five today, oh. I think, for me, please. Bastard. Spin that wheel. Spin the wheel. Spin the wheel. Spin that wheel. Spin that wheel. Spin that wheel. Let's see who gets it next. Can I just say Noah's really taking the best spot? No. Ah. Uh, uh, Emma. 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 I'm going to go for number... Four and six. Oh. Spin that <laughs> wheel. Do it. Spin the wheel. I've like been back in PE. It's protected down to me and James being picked last again. Oh, no. Oh, please, please. <laughs> yes, come on. Please, 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 please. No. Oh. Thank God. <laughs> I'll go for the three and seven, please. Oh. Yeah. I'm I'll so leave. happy. Is it, oh, is, is, is it going to be? Spin that wheel. Land on the line, I dare you. <laughs> oh, I oh. think it might be you, Jimmy. It's a hollow victory. Oh, it's Jimmy! <laughs> Yay! Well done, Jimmy. You've won. The real win is when I override all your shit. So, Jimmy, which one are you going for? <laughs> uh, number two and the veto override. We will now create the list, in our opinions, of the best seven comedies films. <laughs> it's Ever. time. It. Yeah. It's time to collaboratively, no, co competitively collaborate. That's the Yes, thing. competitively collabor collaborating. That's hard. So, start at the bottom with Hammers. That's me. I start, don't I? Oh, yeah. Number seven. My number seven pick. Um, it's a film that I hold near and dear to my heart. It's a bit of an underdog, I'd say. One that is not only well made on a technical level, but has some very, very funny bits in it that I really want this film on this list. I, I am going for a film which looks like it came out in the 70s. However, it didn't. It came out in 2009. Directed by Scott Sanders. I'm giving you... Some of the best comedy you've ever seen is Black Dynamite. 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 Bum, bum, oh, bum. Oh, wow. I have seen that. Oh, what a film. Oh, what a film. I love Black Dynamite. It is, it's such a send up to the 70s and 80s black exploitation genre as both sort of a parody and also sort of, you know, just a homage to it. It's done in, in such a nailed style that fight scene between richard nixon at the end yeah. oh. <laughs> it's just it's it builds so much throughout the film it starts off he's going <laughs> he's going against the man he's going against the drugs on the street and then it's corrupt cops and then it's the nefarious dr Wu, and then it's nunchuck fighting richard nixon <laughs> <laughs> it's just such a build and there's so many great side characters and one-off gags like what i love about it some of the best gags in the film is from the fact that the whole film's based around the fact that this technically could be a film that came out in the 70s so they're keeping all the technical goose and stuff that would be in them so there's one bit where he stands up and he knocks his head on the the boom mic and he's trying not to look at it and there's another bit where there's a fight scene 
and what one act one actor accidentally hits another one and they have to swap him out mid scene because he gets angry <laughs> and it's just oh my god yeah. if, was... if you take anything away from this episode audience please watch black dynamite because it's part of um adult swim wasn't it yes it was also an adult like, swim know, series Rick yes all those good oh, wow. ha, ha, ha. yeah mm-hmm. is is a great comedy it's... that I'd love to see again i just want to watch it again now just talking about it michael j white's landmark role isn't it? Yeah, he was he was in the dark knight for like five minutes yeah and he's also the yeah, lead in this and i i genuinely think he's fantastic like, don't forget he had a cut scene in kill bill volume two did he really? yeah he, he was i'm gonna yeah i think i'm happy to leave it on the list then as a man who's recently acquired an appreciation for this type of cinema um having watched truck turner uh starring isaac hayes lately uh, there is no universe that I could uh, I could veto uh, Black Dynamite. Which means we're going to go on to my number six. <laughs> <laughs> number six. And I think you're going to hate it. Oh. I know, I know, I'm pretty sure James is going to hate it. Well, um, right, everything. <laughs> we're jumping to 2004. Ooh. Uh, Mark Walters. No, Mark Walters even uh, directing. Mm, probably haven't heard of him. And I'm not surprised. It's you know all about all about those cliques at school and that drama. Uh, it's very very quotable. I think, and it definitely has a cult follow- following nowadays. And I think it deserves a place in this list. We're going for Mean Girls. Oh, I knew it. I like Mean Girls. To be fair, it is really <laughs> funny. Yeah, I, was about you. I thought it yeah. might be a sleeper James hit. Yeah, yeah. it's um, good. It's- there's some great bits in Mean Girls. I think Mean Girls has so many like little one. It's so aware of itself, and it's got these little one lines that make fun of itself, whilst still maintaining the film world. Yeah, I think that's really clever, and it, it always like makes me laugh. It never fails to make me smile. And I just when I was thinking about comedies, it was one. Of, I know it's a teen comedy, so it's under that sort of bracket. But we didn't have any rules of subgenres, so you know. Comedy's a comedy. I mean, it's got a great cast to it as well, so I can't really fault yeah. it for that. Written by Tina Fey. Yeah. Uh, is it just Tina Fey? Or is it Tina Fey and Amy? Fee? I think it's just Tina Fey, and then directed by Mark uh, Waters. I haven't seen it, so I can't really make a comment. Oh. But my my only um... so is this really the sixth best comedy ever? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's my only quarrel. I think Mean Girls is great. I don't even think it's better than Black Dynamite. And that's that's kind of why I'm... I don't know. The, the scene when uh, one of the Mean Girls accidentally... When they're doing the Christmas dance um, <laughs> and she accidentally kicks the radio into her boyfriend's face, uh, that stays with me in my in my deepest, darkest moments. That comes to mind. And I just go, Oh, Jason, I'm sorry. Uh, so. At the end... The mean girl gets hit by a bus. Like, what's her head? Really? She gets hit by a bus. <laughs> she gets the big brace things, isn't she? <laughs> yeah. That's the best physical comedy I think I've ever seen. It's so dark. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, I agree. I think mean girls can stay. It, it's good in its own right, even if I don't think it's better than Black Dynamite. It, sure, why not? It's, it's too early. All right, whatever, yeah. It's my bad. I, I think it's a very endearing film. That means we get to move on to Mr. Noel Harvey himself for number five. Take it away. Bringing it back to these shores in Britain here. 21st century. Uh, It's a film that I know is quite dear to some people here. It's one of the Cornetta trilogies. Mm. Which one is it? It's obviously Hot Fuzz. Yes. There you go. It's the correct answer. It might not be the last Cornetta trilogy on the list. Controversially, I hope well, it is. Yeah, just, me too. Just oh. raise your hands if you had Hot Fuzz on your list somewhere. Where, where do I begin with Hot Fuzz? You know, it's a brilliant, brilliant film. It's Edgar Wright. It's got it's got your boys Nick Frost and Simon Pegg in it. Mm. They are both brilliant. It's it's just, it's just constant laughs. I remember when I first watched it, I did one of those days where I pretended to be ill so I didn't go into school. No, on the hot fuzz you would never have done that. That's so you. <laughs> on the hot fuzz. 
Eat you in the oven. Kiss my pants. It was brilliant. Yeah, it has one of the best villains in any comedy ever with uh, Timothy Dalton Skinner. It's like a parody of those um, top films in the USA with the constant editing and like the, the craziness of it all. It's just brilliant. It's got some funny old actors in it that look like they're having a great time as well. It's got the Andes, who are the best, and they deserve a spin-off series. <laughs> it's definitely deserving of its number five spot. I don't think anyone will dispute that, will they? Well, I, if, if I was to have a tiny little dispute on my list, it's obviously higher. Hot and Fuzz is, is probably my favourite comedy film ever. Um, I just love it to pieces. Um, not only is the dialogue spot on, but it uses jokes in its filmmaking as well um, through like cuts and pans and just you, just that one shot of the Andes where he leaves frame and then just darts back in and then leaves again. Fantastic. For, for the time being, sure. It can stay at number five. I, I think I everyone... Like you're a bit upset there, James. Nah, it's, it's all right. I mean, like there's... there's Contingencies. We'll see how There's it goes on later in the smile. list. But... There's pain behind that smile. I had Wrong. Hot Fuzz a lot higher, up, a lot higher up on my list, um, but I'm not going to veto it. Uh, I think we should all say one quote from Hot Fuzz each quickly. Jimmy, you're not vetoing. No, I'm not. In what world am I vetoing Hot Fuzz? You want it to be higher or something? Come on. I, I don't want it to be higher. I think it's great it's at five. Drama. So when needs to start vetoing before it's too nah, late. It's all right. It's fun when the one, one, one quote from Hot Furs. Okay. I should go first, shouldn't I? Yeah. Uh, 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 what is it? I need to be arrested. I, be, I need to be locked up. Why? I'm a slasher of prices. <laughs> and then he just jogs <laughs> <laughs> up. Jimmy? Very, very well I've got another one there. It's just another. It's just the one swarm, actually. No, that was mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh. Mr. Staker, Mr. P.I. Staker, piss taker. <laughs> Go on, James. Hit us with your. I think I know James's favorite. Yeah, you it is my, my favorite line from any film ever. Is in Hot Fuzz, and it's if you want to be a big cop in a small town, fuck off the mother village. <laughs> and that is a bit of foreshadowing about what happens later in the yeah, film. That's, I mean, that's just, yeah. I mean, if we're going into how good the film is, then we can get into that. But for comedy alone, this just... Yeah. <laughs> my, my, my last word on it would be, if you have a spare hour and a half, two hours, have long film is, and you have the DVD, watch the audio commentary with Quentin Tarantino and Edgar Wright, where they don't talk about anything to do with the film. They just have an amazingly good time talking about the whole of cinema. It's oh. as good as yeah. Or watch the um well, there's uh, there's seven commentaries on the on the disc. Uh, watch the ones with the cast, watch the ones with real police officers. Uh there's there's so many. It's such a good time. Number four. Number That's four. Oh, four. I don't I don't know. Oh yeah. I don't know whether to change some of my list around. Feel feel free to. I'm going for 2018. I'm going for something I thought was absolutely hilarious. Um, I thought it was very clever. It's based on a memoir. Okay. Maybe not. So I'm going for the film based on Ron Stallworth's memoir. I'm going Black Klansman. Oh, that's... Ooh. So it's a Ooh. black comedy crime film about a guy who pretends to join the KKK <clears throat> and it's a black policeman joining the KKK which in itself is it's, it's quite funny and then it's his um, co-worker Adam Driver who then actually has to go to these meetings and be this KKK member and I think there's a lot of funny moments. You can't doubt the quality of the film uh, I've only seen half of, well I mean I, I personally found it really boring but uh, but um, other people love the film so you can't doubt the quality of the film o multiple Oscar winner Oh yeah so it is, I forget but, that how funny is it? Is it too much? Is it too good in the drama department for its own good? I think it might be. Yeah, it's like if, if this is the best comedies and we're putting a comedy drama on here, then, they, you know, the waters get muddied a bit because then there's a whole other ocean of films you're drifting in. I think I he didn't make he didn't my... make some yeah, I know, but like it's fine, rules. fine to have like aspects of different genres in it. But it's, you know. it's quantified under black comedy crime film. 
It's it's all down to the vetoes. There's definitely no question for a, a commissioner override because we didn't set any parameters. Who's going to veto it then? Which one of you is actually going to do it? And I reckon neither of you because you're all waiting for something else. My thoughts I mean, exactly. I will. You will. Yeah, yeah I will. Oh, wow. If we're talking comedies. How I many of us actually seen it apart from Emma? Oh no. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I didn't think it was a comedy. I will go back to the drawing board and I'll go for my original number three. So we're jumping back in time now. We ain't going modern. We're going to the 1980s. Yes. We're going David and Jerry Zucker. Oh. And we are looking at parodies. Oh. <laughs> And I'm putting airplane on the list. Yes! It's too long. It's too long. <laughs> he's crying. Look at him. He's so sad. Airplane. I mean, what can I say? It's got so many <laughs> amazing scenes in it. It's got the blow up autopilot. It's oh, got no. everyone lining up to slap the woman on the plane. It has the most like jokes in any film ever, I think. It's, the whole film is just a giggle from yeah, it's start just to finish. It's every, so funny. every joke in that is a classic in before, some way or another. Before we go any further, I just want to say that we're all counting on you. Good luck. Me. It's the other way around, Jimmy. Is it? Yeah. We're all counting on <laughs> it's, The fact I remember any of this film was... A, I haven't seen this film probably in about five or six years, and I remember at least 75% of it. So it's an absolute testament to Leslie Nielsen, Harry One Lloyd. One of the best comedy performances ever, I reckon. It's number two in Channel 4's 50th, 50 greatest comedies. Really? Yeah, it's number, it's number one. Number one. I don't know if that's a bit of a giveaway about what my, yeah. Uh... Historically as well, have, I watched, right, a bit of a tangent. I watched The Poseidon Adventure uh, a week or two ago. I'm not sure if I mentioned it on the podcast. No. Um, but <laughs> that <laughs> film has, Leslie Nielsen was known for being in films like that, in a deadly serious disaster movie, yeah. uh, mm. including, I think, the original Airport. Um, oh, this has got, like... This is bit, like uses so many different elements from like those sorts of movies. Such, yeah, and they quote yeah. Airport as one of like the influences. It's a, a, definitely a direct spoof of Airport. I, in terms of parody, I think if you were to take the parody genre, nothing beats Airplane in terms of parody. Yeah, because when you think modern sort of parodies, they just are too far now. It's just, yeah. it's they don't lean enough into the conventions, do they? Yeah. I think genre conventions are a bit more muddied now than than they were in the seventies and eighties. Anyway, because this film's nineteen eighty, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, those disaster films, like everyone was sick of them. The seventies had just been disaster film, disaster film, disaster film, and to get something that just outright took all of these such established conventions, such all these massive ensemble casts, these huge budgets, and these stupidly ridiculous situations, and just and it plays it straight though. Like yeah. nobody's in on the joke in that film. <laughs> They're all deadly serious. So good, and and that's 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 where he got his drinking problem. <laughs> We could talk about, we could do a whole episode dedicated to that film. Does that suit your guys' taste a bit more? I I mean, number four. Yeah. I only have four. Then we've got to make my highest on this list. It was number three for me, so it's not a major loss, but. I didn't have it on my list. It was, you it didn't was have my number three as well, yeah. What? I forgot about it until 10 minutes before. It was on my backup list. But... All right, I'll so... give this. It was my number one. Ooh. Ooh. Now I can't use it, can I? I, I, I oh, no big veto you could veto it if you wanted, and yeah, then you could put it higher. Yeah. I will no. I, uh, I like the excitement of fitting the new one at the top. There's <laughs> only a handful of films that can legitimately beat what's on this list so far. There is there is one in particular that I want to talk about, but I'm scared to put it at number three. Interesting. Well. Talking of number three, why don't you take us yeah. away? Oh, why don't you come on up to the stage, kiddo. Oh man, this is tough now. Do I? What do I risk? I'm gonna go with my number four um, pick. But this is number three. Yeah, this no, this is yeah, number this three. Is number three oh, was, this was my number four. Uh, so uh, we post two thousands again. Funnily oh, enough. God, what's wrong with you people? <laughs> yeah, I, I know. I know. Uh, there, are, there are so many films on comedies. Comedy is my favourite genre, if you didn't figure that out. Um, so the fact that there's films on this list that I can't just pains me. But if we're going my favourites, like some of the comedies that I've put on this list are my favourite films. So if I don't put them on, I'd be a bit remiss. So yeah. 
bit of a spooky mockumentary time with what we do in the shadows. Yeah. Oh, oh, that, I go with you... Titi, yeah? I, oh, with I thought you were going to say one of the scary movies. Oh, <laughs> <I was>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was about to lose all respect in you. Fair, fair. Oh, oof. Uh, Comedy horror is my favourite genre as a whole. And I feel like, whilst not being overly scary, like what we do in the shadows is the perfect blend of the two. Where it okay. takes concepts that are so macabre and dark yeah. and just plays them so straight, so standard, and with characters that are so endearing and almost like lovable in a way, but with such like dark undertones that just makes it so good. Obviously, Taika Waititi, you, you, you know him by now. He's, he's one of the best names in comedy at the moment. Everything he's done is like fantastic. And it's, it's spawned a TV series, which is arguably as good, if not better than the film itself. Yeah. Really? So yeah, Jen, if you have not seen the What We Do in the Shadows oh. series is like, there are bits in that which are way funnier than some of even the film's bits. Really? Yeah. It, How bloody good is this series? It's got Matt Berry in it as well as the vampire. Oh, uh, sold. Yeah. And, Colin, Colin Robinson as the energy vampire. We're getting to the series now. I don't want to worry about that. But the the film... Werewolves, uh, not swearwolves. Yeah. Werewolves, not swearwolves. Where are we? We're werewolves, not swearwolves. Yeah, they could have just done it as a normal film, but I feel like the, the mockumentary aspect to it really makes it... It's one of the few examples where it really actually works. There's mm -hmm. so yeah, many... so original. It, I, I don't know how it, it does it, because it doesn't have any more right to be a mockumentary than any other mockumentary. But it's ten times better than the, the swathe of of mockumentaries we had after um, the yeah. office. Mm. And I like I like the fact that it uses like <laughs> like the documentary sort of tropes as well as like film tropes. So mm. like you know the <laughs> that one cameraman that's always like yeah. running around. Oh, oh or at the end of the like cameraman, uh, maybe that cameraman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Surprisingly emotional uh, in parts as well. Like, yeah, it's it very right. sweet moments. I feel like the ending with um, oh, v Viago, which is uh, Taika Waititi's character, yeah. where he had his love who went away, and the, the ending of them yes. together, even when she's old and she's turned, him, turned her into a vampire, it's so sweet, but it's so funny as well. Some some people don't like the age difference, <laughs> uh, me being 400 and her being 80. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we love each other. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. But, yeah, we're doing the shadows, I love it. So, are, we, are we keeping it? A, uh, a non-American, non-British film. Yeah. yeah. I, I can't veto uh, what we're no. I'm thinking yeah, I should have put more Taika Waititi on now on my list now. To be honest, Thor Ragnarok were heavily considered. I also considered it, and um, that would have been vetoed straight what, away. What was it? Hunt for the Wilder People. Hunt oh, for the Wilder People is a very good film. I don't think it's funny enough to be on the list. No, but... I didn't put it on the list, but it is so funny. Taika Waititi and his character work, like I think he does amazing. Yeah, Julian yeah, Dennison in that film, the main kid, is great. But yes, thus ends my choices for the uh, right. thing. One notable exception that I'm very concerned I didn't say, but hopefully you guys have common sense. We've got two more to go. So with Jimmy's first and only pick. Come on, Jimmy. Two got, more to go. And none of my films on my seven list or the three on my backup list are currently on. So I've got a bit of a decision to make. Jimmy, um, do a psychic link. I know, I hopefully one that's on your list is also on mine at number one. Pick that one. What am I at? What are we at? Number two? Yeah. Number two. I'd one for the 20s. So it must be clear. Very prescient now. Very prescient. Please. Because <laughs> um, I have picked a film from the 20s. <laughs> I've Buster Keaton. I've picked The General. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's getting vetoed. Uh, it was my number one. It was my number one. But I only get one spot. Um, before you veto me, I'll just say a few words about the general. Uh, I think Buster Keaton, at his prime, which this is, uh, director, stuntman, composer, actor, as you might have guessed, um, his cinematic powers at their height were equal to Charlie Chaplin. He just didn't get the same recognition for it. The General is, for me, his best film. A supremely lovable character. I think it's the peak of physical comedy. Um, these incredibly dangerous stunts with this real moving train. Um, but there's the thing about Buster... You mean uh, Locomotive? The Locomotive, the General herself. 
uh, there are some some great moments of pathos throughout the film. It mixes the sadness with the the comedy extremely well. Uh, laugh out loud, funny. The whole train sequence is a stunning bit of cinema. Uh, the physical comedy is unparalleled. Buster Keaton, for a man who doesn't express, old stony face himself, the empathy you feel for his character is unbelievably high. Uh, I think. It might not be everyone's cup of tea, so... I'm just going to veto, because I can't veto my number one pick, can I? Oh, yeah, true, 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 true. Ah, uh, that's a shit. No, I'm not allowed to veto override myself either, so... No, thank so, you. off you... Emma off and you Jimmy, you've still got one. Jimbo. Emma and Jimmy still got one, haven't they? Yeah. Well, uh, this is good, because it means I only get one pick, but I get two of my films to at least talk about, so... You Maybe are. three if Emma disagrees. I just... Yeah, it's true. I just felt like... I just need, I, we needed to talk about a silent film on this list. No, completely, yeah. Um, yeah. Silent yeah. films were funny, like, let's be real. Like, the, the, the whole point of them is to be funny more than to tell yeah. a dramatic story because there is no sound. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so, cast your mind back, which some of us can, to the 1990s <laughs> when, when we were all two or three. Um, and there was a man who had taken Hollywood by storm and just transformed, I think, the reputation of comedians and their dedication to comedy. Uh, a rubber-faced man of many, many talents, as crazy off-screen as he is on-screen. And his best role, undoubtedly, is the Ace Ventura pet detective himself, <laughs> Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey. Uh, James will love that one. This is my number four pick, but Number two. I want to play it here. Infinitely quotable. I don't think any other 90s comedy is as funny as this. Yeah, you might completely disagree. And nobody but Jim Carrey could pull off a character as madcap as this guy. And it just be so goddamn funny. I quote this film every day to people. You know, when I'm parking my car, I lean out the window like a glove. My other favourite one, if I'm not back in five minutes, just wait longer. <laughs> uh, I say that all the time. It's a kind of comedy that we just don't get anymore. Comedy has to be deep and meaningful now. I wouldn't say anything about Ace Ventura Pet Detective is deep and meaningful. Everything that film exists to make you laugh, make you have such a good time. Veto! Uh, are you vetoing it? <laughs> I, 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 have, I have a little bit to say on Ace Ventura Pet Detective. Oh, before I get vetoed. <laughs> Jim Carrey, one of my favourite actors, both dramatically and comedically. He's, he's obviously... Look, I'm glad we got to talk to him about talk to him. Talk about him. <laughs> Where have you oh, yeah. been? <laughs> Where is he? I'm him um, reborn. But yeah, the, the 90s right at his peak, and he's done some fantastic. Not, I almost had the mask on this list, uh, for just sure. for his completely utter zaniness. Um, Ace Ventura: Pet Detective uh, doesn't necessarily hold up for me as much, uh, just because it's got slight transphobia in it. Massively, just, yeah. Oh, yeah, very massively <laughs> transphobia <laughs> it, at the end, um, and not only that. I'm, I'm of the opinion Ace Ventura 2 is better. Oh, really? What, when Nature yeah. Calls? Oh, man, When Nature Calls. That was on my short list. Bueno. That was how close I came to putting Ace Ventura 2 on my list. But wow. I, number two, I, ca I can't have it there, unfortunately, Jimbo. Sorry. Well, <laughs> this is great. I, the, the least amount of picks, and I get to say the most. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a, how about that? A, oh, let's Come keep on. them coming, boys. Uh, is that all your vetoes gone now? Yeah. That is all our vetoes except yours. So, 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 one, so the veto override, which I won't get to use now, in the bin, there we go. Um, yee, yee, yee. Go 1997. No, don't. No, don't. None, none of yeah. my other films are newer than 1984. It was in the 70s, Jimmy. I, no, I know exactly what film you mean. Um, Do you? No, it's actually one of two. If you pick either one, I'd be happy. 97! Oh, no. It's between this one, this one. Do one from 2010. It's between no, these don't two. do 2000. we got so many past 2000s films on here. Oh, Ooh, well, my number two. Say that. I'm going to say that my number two, who, who gets number one, Noah? Noah. Gets number one. My number two is probably your number one, Noah. No, because his number one's Airplane. Well, he's airplane. Not, ah, but it's not anymore. I think he'll play what I have as my number two now as your number one. Okay. So I, I'm going to play my number three. We are in the 1970s. Oh, that's a good start. And boy, James, if you thought Ace Ventura Pet Detective is a bit dicey by today's standards, no. this film is worse. <laughs> this film is way worse. Uh, but you know what? 
I think it gets away with it. It it does it with such an emotional weight. It does it in it. There's I'm almost speechless. It's blazing saddles. Yeah, that's that's one of them. Yeah. He rode a blazing saddle. He oh, rode a shiny badge. Um, I can't quote anything for this film that does not immediately get kicked off YouTube. Um, blazing yeah, saddles, isn't it? I can like make a satirical favorite. take on. Massively, massively. Yeah. Okay. Go, yeah. go on, James. What you can say. But uh, here's here's a, a clean joke that we can say from Blazing Saddles. Um, is where he's like, they used to call me the Waco kid. It's just like, look at this hand. <laughs> if there's a rock, yeah, but this is my shooting hand. <laughs> Jigga Wilder has some of the best lines in history in this. Um, I like it when he's telling a story. When that kid, he gets, he, basically, the Waco kid, Gene, Gene Wilder, used to be uh, like the fastest gun in the West or whatever. Um, but one day a kid came up to him and said, draw, uh, and he just couldn't bring himself to do it. So he turned around. And the kid shot him in the ass immediately. I think this film is is like the 1970s Black Dynamite in many ways. I think it's very empowering. It pokes so much fun at just how stupid racism is that it really does empower. It is, I think it is an, an empowering film for, for, for black people. It just shows you the foolishness of any sort of racism. Um, and that's why it gets away with so many uses of that naughty word. Because it's it's showing it's saying look how stupid it is to to say this word and point fun at these things. It's it's also the best, or in my opinion, it's the best Mel Brooks film. It is. I, I said that I was only going to have one Mel Brooks film on my personal seven, and it was between this and Young Frankenstein and this one. Uh, and the producers is high up there too. But Blazing Saddles, I I don't think two minutes go by in Blazing Saddles without me bursting my guts laughing. Uh, it is. is <laughs> No, yeah, yeah, I should really get that picked out. I actually get that all the time, but um, oh, it's so funny. They clearly had no idea how to end it, so I think towards the very last sort of five minutes, yeah. it kind of goes down. But some of those last five minutes are the best bits, like when the um, the French was the French mistake when they go onto the set of the. It's it breaks down all the boundaries of filmmaking. It breaks down all the boundaries of genre, but it also plays with those tropes to the same degree as Airplane does. It's just a wonderful, wonderful film. It's a shame Cleveland Little didn't go on to do more. He's fantastic in this. It was written for Richard Pryor. Very glad he didn't get this role. I don't think he would have been right for it. Um, Gene Wilder's best role, hands down. Mel Brooks is hilarious in the film as well. There's, there's so much that. It, it's very of its time. Yeah. But I feel like that's part of its charm as that's well. It's right, guys. But, it, but it's aged so much better than... It's not racist. It's not genuinely racist is what I would no. say. There's a lot of films of that era that are uh, like Peter Sellers' The Party, I would say. Yeah, it was in blackface the whole film. Um, this film is pointing fun at almost other comedies at the time that are actually racist. So yeah. it, it's unafraid to say things rather than, you know. It doesn't hold any punches. <laughs> it, doesn't, it, do, it doesn't just touch the thing, it just punches it in the face. Yeah, it's absolutely. Just, yeah. It, it, it punches racism in the face. Yeah. Just like Mongo punches the horse in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Comedy is not my favourite genre, but a few films tickle me the way Blazing Saddles. Right, that um, leads us to our number one spot, Mr. Noah <laughs> himself. My original number one was Airplane, but that got taken. There's some films on here that um, uh, not a lot of them would, uh, are on the list. I'm going to do one from 2000 Tower. 2010, sorry. <laughs> Tower. 2010. We now, we now use like it buildings. It's a, uh, a very dark film. I don't know how it got made. It follows four jihadists who try to uh, aspire to be suicide bombers. And it is, of course, Four Lions. A, a cracking film at that. Num oh, number one. That is, yeah, no, though, but very good film. I was concerned you were going to pick something that I've been like, mm, but go on. Lines, great in its own. I um, try and convince us now. Oh, oh no, I'm just hoping you veto. Anyway, I just want to talk about it. Um, no, it's it. If you've done it now, it's staying. Uh, where do I begin with this film? Like I said, I don't know how this got made. This is unbelievably dark, as pitch black dark as it can get. And it's uh, written by the terrific comic Chris Morris, directed it as well. It's got our boy Riz Ahmed. He's gone on to incredible things at the moment. Like Riz Ahmed. Got Kay Van Novak. Obviously, we know him as Face Jacker, Phone Jacker. Nigel Lindsay. 
what what a performance from this Barry, the white Muslim who <laughs> get, gets him to swallow his SIM cards. He wants him to blow up boots and it's just ridiculous. It's actually quite sad as well, this film. I don't know how it made it so sad. I actually find it quite sad at the end when Riz Ahmed's character, Omar, just walks into boots and just blows himself up. It's a very bleak ending, but... It's, it's, very, we talk about it's, very, it's very depressing. It I is. Think, right? I, I think we can, we can talk about it, yeah. Yeah. Rubber dingy rapids, man. It's a film. Rubber dingy rapids, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they want to blow up boots because they sell condoms that make you want to bang white girls. Uh, there's the bit with the... Is that the, 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 is that the reason why? Yeah. I've, I've never watched it to the end. I watched... And then there's the, uh, the bit where he steals bottles of bleach and he, he, goes and he does an IRA voice and then he does a woman's voice, but he covers his beard up. <laughs> uh... <laughs> And then he gets, it's just, it's just constant laughs. I don't know how they genuinely got this funded and made, but I'm happy they did because it's so funny. I mean, it's only like five years after the 7-7 seven, seven attacks in London, nine years after 9-11, like, Jesus. There, but There isn't another film like Four Lions as well. There isn't? Oh, there is. No, there isn't. I, I can't think of another film. This is film England is close. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, well, they're actually quite similar in many ways, but... Um, but ultimately, you know, comedy has no bound, no boundaries. Except for on it this list. sometimes. <laughs> yeah. No, you can make anything funny, as long as it's funny. Uh, That's do, the point of comedy. Do okay. either of you two want to say anything about Four Lions before I've not seen it. Disappears? I've, I've stated my case on it. Are you um, going to veto but, Jimmy or not? I will say that... I have seen exactly 15 minutes of this film mm -hmm. about eight years ago in 2012, I suppose, 2013, uh, little 15, 16 year old Jimmy uh, saw this film come up on Amazon Prime mm -hmm. or, or love film instant as it was then. That yeah. shows. <laughs> um, and I thought, oh, this sounds funny. I've heard about it. I've seen the trailer. You know, that crow blows up. That's pretty funny, isn't it? Uh, let's see. Let's see what happens. And I, I turned it on, and 15, 16 year old Jimmy was not ready for a comedy that irreverent. Um, and I, I turned it off after 15 minutes. I was like, this feels like I'm watching something I shouldn't be seeing. Really. Yeah. Um, yeah at the time, I, 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 I just wasn't mature enough to watch it. And I, I think even now, it's, it's a hard watch. Yeah, but that's not the reason why I'm vetoing it. But I am going to veto it. Uh, I just don't think it's the funniest film of all time, so Vita. <laughs> so, back to the drawing board, what have you got for us, Noah? So, this is Noah. this is final now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Noah. Unless, Noah. Unless, I, unless it's so shit that I override it so it goes back to the other one. No, Noah, Noah, look in my eyes, Noah. I'm going to look Noah, up please. the funny comedies please. quick. <laughs> please pick the right one, please. 19... Mike Myers, 97. No! no. <laughs> oh. 1970s. Ensemble. Yeah. My real number one. Now it's a film that <laughs> gets a lot of hate, and I don't know why. It is, of course, Grown Ups too. Hear me <laughs> no, I just pick a very foul. <laughs> Hear me out. No, you're not talking. What, what I will say about Grown Ups briefly, I think Grown Ups one's actually all right. <laughs> It's not great, but it, uh, it made me laugh when I watched it. I'm quitting the podcast if you speak grown ups too. All right. Hear me out. <laughs> I'm thinking the love guru starring Mike Myers. <laughs> no! Stop torturing us, you twat! This is why we make people message to us. All right. <clears throat> Serious answer only now. I am, of course, picking a film. Good. From. <laughs> the 21st century. No! <laughs> late, late mid, no, late noughties. It is a film that is Fantastic, so funny. Unbelievably funny. It is, of course, Martin McDonough's film in Bruges. Ooh. <sighs> Ooh, outside pick. It was on my shortlist, Noah. Oh, I do quite like In Bruges. A very dark. In Bruges is the funniest, one of the funniest films I think you could ever watch. Yeah, one of, not the. 
Well, well apparently it is, according to us. It Oscar. wasn't up to me. My pick was taken away from me. Um, it was up to you. <laughs> it was actually I am up to you. In grief because it is just one of the funniest films ever. It's got Colin Farrell and Brendan Gleeson as these two hitmen in in a beautiful city. In and Colin in Farrell Delta. just hates it. And he's just so funny. It Just from the moment when he's like telling those fat Americans that they can't get up that ladder. And he, then he just he slowly runs around them. There's so much in that film that really delves into some like really intense subject matter. Well, it yeah. starts with him killing a kid, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. That's the whole motivation for them going to Bruges, and it's just, yeah, it's not the fairy tale town it sounds like. Come on, it is funny. There's I've been to so much of it. So like the chemistry oh between Brendan Gleeson and Colin Farrell is so good, and then you've got Harry as Ray Ralph Fiennes in one of his best roles of this just like fed up like boss. He just is constantly swearing. He calls his wife an inanimate object. It's a <laughs> it's, tragic it's comedy. Not, it's not tragedy and comedy go together yeah and that's not the way it's said obviously but it's, it's just that whole mentality i th- i think i'm not adverse for it being number one yes you are i mean kind of i am <laughs> but you know it's it funny be- i think it's hilarious but it's not the most quotable film of all time as monty python the holy grail is or as austin powers and slash man and mystery that should have been five or six i <laughs> All right, so that thus, uh, thus ends our list. Do you want to go through our personal lists and what we had? Absolutely. Guys, yeah, we um, I will now put up all of our personal lists now. Anyway, Chicken Run. None of us picked Chicken Run. <laughs> what a segue that was! <laughs> <laughs> it's because I said friction. You made me think of a thrust. Chicken Run. Um, and on that note, <laughs> let us know what your top comedies are down below. Don't forget to us a like and subscribe so you know when we post. Normally on a Sunday, but who knows what time. It could be any time post 12. Hit that bell. Hit that bell? Hit that bell. <laughs> <laughs> and we will see you all next week you can uh, ring my bell ring my bell i mean like yeah, i didn't have the option to go underneath you <laughs> 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 well, I mean, all right then ah. <laughs>